Hey, thank you for joining me for the latest episode of Mornings with Mook. This is your host, Marcus Mook Washington. And we're going to start off with um, the Major League Baseball talking about acknowledging Negro League statistics, which obviously will change the um, record books in certain categories of who has what record. So as you can imagine, when this was announced, social media went abuzz with people who talk about, well, in their eyes, they're not going to observe the record. And in their eyes, this is the true uh, person who has the highest average and not this other person. And then it's going to attack the Negro Leagues about um, how well statistics were kept and were statistics kept for every game. How many games did they play? Um level of competition, if you allow the Negro League, what leagues are you going to allow next? And all of that's going to happen because, you know, you're always going to get that chicken little uh, person who's going to act like the sky is falling. And my thing is, this is the dangerous thing about records in sports, is the fact of observing records in any sports when sports were still segregated. And that's just something that I know some people want to blow off and just say, oh, it doesn't matter, or oh, I don't care if it was segregated or not. But again, from a statistical data, it's not about whether you care or not. From a statistical data point of view and the validity of the data being evaluated, that does count because environment and conditions count. So if you're taking away a certain sect of society, where the numbers aren't taken into account, that sort of talent provider, then the numbers are going to be different. Then the numbers <clears throat> are going to have questions to it. And this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about black, white. We're not talking about Negro League, Major League Baseball. What we're talking about is the validity of the data. And when you use, um, when you use the data <clears throat> and the data is not counting people who are being purposely excluded, um, no matter what the talent level is, then the data has already been conditionalized. So for me, um, I am not a big um, historical data person because what I've always said is data is contained within the environment, conditions, and circumstances that it lived. So I was never this big, well, look at the person and how much he averaged in 1979 compared to the person in 2024 when the conditions are different, when the data is different. Uh, in Major League Baseball case, the um, stadiums and how they're built are different. The talent is different. In basketball case, when I grew up, the NBA did not have a three-point line. The NBA was three to make two on free throws. And all of those things, the conditions were very, very different. That's why I always find it's just silly, silly when people try to compare Michael Jordan and LeBron James. It's just stupid. The, the NBA that Michael Jordan played in, it's not the NBA that LeBron played in. The NBA... Uh, that Michael Jordan uh, played in still had condensed offenses. The NBA that LeBron plays in is a space game. The NBA that um, Michael Jordan played in, the CBA was wildly different than today's CBA. And all those things are conditioned that impact data. You can't poo-poo it away. So for me, uh, the Negro League uh, players being observed and acknowledged and their data being observed and acknowledged, I think it's a good thing. Um, I don't think it's the negativity, but I know people, because I've already seen it, I know people that it certainly does bother and it bothers them a lot. So as you know, over the last you know few days, there's been a lot of talk of the NCAA has pretty much given up on um, their flimsy amateurism definition, a definition that was outdated, and to be frank with you, a definition that was invented. You know, and I, I don't think fans always want to acknowledge that that was invented. It was invented in a self-serving manner, of course, like anything else. And when an industry wants to purposely keep as much of the gross revenue 
as the NCAA has always wanted to keep. And we've known for years that it's it's a bunch of flim flam um, to to keep this rated G. And the thing that gets me is, is that everything that I've heard that was going to happen that comes with uh, players being able to capitalize off their talent hasn't happened. Remember the stuff with the NIL? Oh, my gosh, people will not watch because they don't want to see professional players in college. NIL didn't affect ratings. Just go and look at ratings. Oh, my gosh, you know, women's basketball, I mean, women's athletes would take a step back because no one will want women as endorsers, and then all these guys will make money, and women won't make money. You know, that was that argument, too. Uh, take a look at women in NIL and tell me how accurate that was. <laughs> I mean, the truth of the matter is what it's done is, and what NIL has done is what capitalism has always meant for it to do. If you can be a brand ambassador because of a skill that you provide, you will be compensated. The higher and the better you are at that skill, the more your compensation will be. So yes, you can take a look at Armando Baycott, who had all kinds of commercials, both local and national, because he was a recognizable face that could be presented that they felt like added value to the brand. You know what? So did Caitlin Clark. You see what I'm saying? And it, it wasn't man, woman, or any that. Those two examples of people who could bring strength and value to brand ended up getting paid handsomely. Now, that plays a lot of part in this thing. You know, people want to uh, put up these arbitrary things. That person didn't win. What does winning have to do with it? Winning doesn't have to do anything with brand endorsements. It is what um, what sect are you trying to appeal to? So when you look at uh, someone like LaMelo Ball, LaMelo Ball might not ever win. His shoes will always sell. Because look at the sect that of their customer base that they're selling to. So LaMelo Ball has value. I don't care how bad the Charlotte Hornets are. Has nothing to do with whether Lamarlo Bell has value. So all of this stuff that gets said that is just wholly, wholly inaccurate, flat out lies. And then we're down the road and you're finding out that they are all lies. None of this stuff is coming true. Is it perfect? No, but capitalism wasn't ever meant to be perfect. So yes, you're going to have people who are going to take chances and on their chances, there are going to be consequences when they're wrong on their chances. Welcome to everyday life in a capitalistic country. So why would NIL be any different? So kudos um, to the fall of the NCAA and kudos to these student athletes. Summer basketball, because I don't like to use the term AAU. Uh, summer basketball is, you know rearing and going right now we've had one live period which was back um earlier uh in may and the one thing i have to caution parents about this with all these new circuits we're past the whole nike adidas under armor circuit you know now puma has a circuit may hoops have a circuit hoop group has always been there but they've always designed their stuff you know different we never put it in the same conversation as uh, the three major ones. But my warning to parents is this. I talked to multiple Division One coaches during the first live period. And you know what they spoke about? They spoke about budgets. The idea that their budgets are not going to allow them to be at all these places. Or they there's a couple of tours. I don't I don't want to start getting into too much detail. But there's a couple of circuits that I that I was told they'll only go if there is a specific player they want to watch. But they're not going to go and graze, so to speak, which is what you've seen in the past. Yeah, 
I'm kind of chasing down this kid, but I'm grazing all these other courts to find kids. And then with conversations with coaches, AU coaches, uh, people, trusted people, and we'll graze over here to this court to see this kid because I've been told maybe I want to take a look at this kid. You know, just with budgets, you can't do that at every one of these circuit stops. So for the parents, if you have a kid that's in a certain talent band, this is not for everyone. If your kid is in a high level uh, uh, talent band, be careful about what circuit you um, you choose. Not everyone is going to benefit from being on EYBL because when coaches go to EYBL, they are looking for a certain type of player. Is your child a certain that type of player? You know, there are good players that come in different packages. So is your child that type of player? So when they get there, he's not overwhelmed by, you know, being swallowed up by uber athletic, five-star, six-nine, I can do everything, score from all three levels, switchable, big, blah, 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 blah. And your child doesn't fit into that. And then maybe your child's better off being at Under Armour and not on EYBL. Just... If your child is of a certain talent band, high D2, mid D2, low D1, those type of kids, choose wisely. Choose the circuit where the coaches and the schools that will be recruiting you will dedicate is dedicating the dollars to send resources to that particular circuit. Do what's best for your child. Don't worry about trying to get style points with your co-worker or with your friends. Thank you for joining me for another episode with Mornings with Moose.